here in California for another episode we're looking at the JK designs orca Look at this beauty we're gonna talk to JK himself learn a bit about this talking about Bali songs to be exact I'm gonna go into some detail about it. I'm gonna do it all California style. Laid back under the palm trees, drinking my Earth Aid Kombucha Pink Lady thing. Listening to this record right here, Yugoslavian Space Program. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Talking about nine. This knife here is one of the most beautiful knives I've owned. The blade, the way it's made, look at those lines. It immediately attracted me to it. I was so attracted. Speed channels, even the way Orca's written on it, this is beautiful. His logo on the other side, JK. The pinless design, this colorway is exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to be like an Orca. The white enamel in the center, black. I mean, it really does look like an Orca, like an Art Deco Orca. And it flips amazing. It makes these great sounds. There's a something super, super satisfying about flipping this knife. The weight feels almost perfect. The grip of these handles and the ends for choker fans. It just really is impressive. S35 VN steel. Oh, God. I gotta change my diapers. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. Really nicely done. Just an amazing work of art but completely functional and one of the best knives I've ever flipped. I reached out to Julian at JK Designs and asked him a few questions. He was kind enough to answer them and I appreciate that. Let's hear what Julian has to say about the knife, about his company. We're gonna talk about all this. We're gonna look closer at the knife. Stop looking at me and we're gonna look at the knife and we're gonna talk to Julian and thank you guys.
I started things up in 2015 when I was a senior in college. I was studying industrial design and was just kind of bored and wanted to um, make some stuff and see about selling it. So I was kind of into the EDC community at the time and um, I designed a little Nuck bottle opener deal and started producing those with a water jet guy. Started up more designs and uh, eventually I realized I was paying this water jet guy way too much money so I decided to put it towards a CNC machine. Um, that's when I moved to Colorado and uh, started making the Bally's. I took a lot of influence from the Grimsmo YouTube channel. Um, I would watch a lot of their vi videos and tutorials and it was just really interesting and uh, fun to watch. So that was a good influence. Um, I got uh, Chris Reeves Sabenza was my first pretty nice knife. And when I got that, I was just super into trying to make a knife and um, yeah, so that was that was a really good time. And then when I got to Colorado, I took some influence from a knife maker here, Nick Swan, who helped me figure out my uh, CNC machine a little bit. So he was a good influence and um, just a really nice guy in general. Cosmos. Cosmos. Everything that I've put out has been made either in my dad's house before I moved to Colorado or in my house by me. Um, and it's been a lot of work. I want to put more time towards uh, design and maybe, you know, taking care of myself a little bit better. So I'm planning to hire a couple guys when I get into this new shop um, here in mid-June. So that will be really helpful. Orca blade milling. That is a CNC tool path that is done with a ball mill. Um, so I laid that design out and am able to trace the design with the end mill producing the look that you see on there. design and the other aspects of the orca that stuff was all done just trying to make a knife that flipped really well that was really solid and wouldn't need very much maintenance um, so the pinless stops are kind of an evolution of the work that was done on the monarch that system kind of needed an improvement and um, so I find that the way that this is structured it's just a lot more rigid over time and a lot of the milling that you see on the orca was done to reduce weight um the blocks that i started with were pretty heavy so i just had to mill them out all kinds of ways to get down to that 4.5 area i have some other ideas for like the next batch of them some makers and flippers that I like. Um, Nick Swan again, Brian Efros, those guys are both in Colorado and I have love for them. Um, various other custom folder makers and the Grimms Bros for sure. Valley song wise, I guess I'd say the Squid Squad, love what they're doing, they are killing it. Good vibes. I'll shout out Joe Hansen, 
Casey, uh, DCB. Yeah, I love all those guys, so I guess keep an eye out for what they're working on. And flippers, let's see, I'll go with Seiji, Draven, Ash, Joff, um, and that Igor kid. That kid is super cool. Um, and Bally's Gin kills it. So yeah, thanks for the questions, man. Later. You know, really until you hold these things and you're at a certain point with them and real understanding of how things are made, that's why these things get to a price point of where this is at. I mean, people would think of, you're crazy to pay over a thousand dollars for a Bali song. But when you flip this and you flipped others, I mean, there's so many great knife makers that are much cheaper than this that flip great, but this is limited to 200, the materials, the art, the craft, the flippability, everything about it to me justifies its price. Um, do I still love BRS and Krakens and Squid Industries? Yes, I love all those things. I love to flip them, I have them, I collect them. Um, but this is something else, you know, bet, it's not better or worse. That's the other thing too. It's some people prefer this, some people prefer that. It doesn't, it, it's okay, it doesn't matter. But this is something really special and really nice. And um, I feel very fortunate to get one. I really hunted one down until I found the, this exact colorway. I wanted this exact one. And when I saw it for sale, I got it from Damico Flips. So thank you for that, buddy. I'm definitely gonna take care of it and love it out here in California, underneath the rays and the palm trees. <sighs> just digging the vibes, man, with my Bali songs. What can I say? I mean, I'm just gonna have another sip of my fucking kombucha over here. <clears throat> I don't know. It's just, makes me feel good, man. I feel like, I feel like jumping in the pool with my orca. All right, we've been listening to this record. So black, you can eat it. Oh, yeah. It smells like, it smells like Serbia, like Yugoslavian vinyl. Mm, I love it. Mm. Um, Yugoslavian space program. I got this when I was on tour with my band. I was in Serbia in Belgrade and I bought this there just the curiosity of it the guy at the record store said it was really good and it's super good in my opinion it's what we've been listening to it's like craft work or something and a lot of different futuristic spacey sounds I, I like that I like futuristic spacey psychedelic sounds I like those things those are things that I like this is a good album it has multiple different bands and they're all doing psychedelic, spacey, weird, futuristic sounds, kind of like craft worky kind of sounds. I like that. I like those kind of sounds. Great record. You might be able to find it somewhere online or something like that, but you're not gonna walk into a store in America and find this record. I seriously doubt it. Somewhere in America, you might, but yeah. Right, there's a few things watching back that I kind of want to go over and talk about that I feel I sort of missed. JK Designs pouch that came with it. I really wish I had one of those bags, but this was number 74. It must have been before he changed it to the bags. My Bali songs never really stay in these anyways. I end up just setting this aside somewhere, but I do like those cloth things he's doing now. Those are really cool. Didn't talk too much about this enamel dot. And I had noticed in some of my shots after viewing it back that my knife was a bit dirty, but this thing is clean and in really great condition. Dirty because there was just some lube sticking to some of the dirt from my backyard where I did the shots. Yeah, he puts a little white dot, sometimes it's red or different colors to match the anodization that he does. So there's various colors of these knives. I took this knife apart 
I do that with most of my knives just to see how they're made and how they're built. And man, this thing is built really tight when you put it back together and you put the washers in there. Its tolerances are so great. It's really well built and really made exact. Bushings, uh, bronze washers. I own a shop here in San Diego where I sell records, music stuff, but I also sell knives. So I'm working on knives all the time. I take apart most of my knives, clean them, sharpen them, work on them, help people pick knives. And I sell Bali songs. I'm an authorized Squid Industries dealer, which is really awesome. They're great people, but I appreciate all different knives, makers. I've been flipping for about a year. I'm not super good, but I've learned a lot of tricks. I've cut myself a lot in the past year, but I've had a blast, man, meeting people in the community, doing these videos, especially during the pandemic. Bali Song has kept me sane. Um, kind of opened a door that was locked deep down inside of me somewhere. So really love the knife community, the Bali Song community, really having a blast with it. But I'm only as good as I am. I keep improving all the time. And and it just consistency, practice, learning new tricks. I've ended up with quite a collection of Bali songs and pocket knives, throwing knives. So I appreciate it all. Kind of how I come at this is just as an enthusiast, but now lucky enough to be able to sell them and work with people. I want to say thanks to Julian for answering questions, taking the time to do that. It was really informative and cool to hear some of his story and his history. Looking forward to more of his designs and apparently he's going to upgrade the Orca or do something. He's got some things up his sleeve, so that's really curious and cool. All right, you guys, damn right I got knives signing out. Adios, amigos. Catch you soon.